I'm just supporting it off the table uh, with the dew cramp here and uh, that should give me sufficient rigidity just to drill this out. Welcome back to Workshop Friend and video number seven of renovating my Adcock and Shipley 1A milling machine. Today I'm going to start work on the horizontal milling components which were missing from the machine and in particular the support arm. So uh, this bar, um, I have some material for it and uh, I'm going to tackle it on my Myford lathe which is a bit too small for this job but I think we can just about manage it. So this is the material I have for the support bar which slides into the top of the mill. Uh, the hole at the top of the mill is two and a half inches whereas this is nominally two and three quarter inches so I've got to reduce the diameter. So um, in preparation for that I've made this fixed steady which uh, goes on my Myford lathe and that will enable me to uh, machine this. The other thing that uh, I need to determine is the actual length and we'll need to go over to the machine and see how much we need to lop off this bar. This is the support arm bracket which I had cast and you can see that in an earlier video. I made the pattern for it, had it cast and it's, uh, it requires uh, the boring of the uh, the larger hole here to fit this and the smaller hole here for the bearing and a cross hole here for a locking mechanism so or a cotter I guess you could call it. The first thing really is to work on this because I need to make this a good fit in the head of the mill and once we've got uh, the diameter of this then I can make this to suit. So we'll go over to the mill now and we'll work out how long this bar needs to be. Now I've not removed the vertical head to show the hole that the bar passes through but you can see the cotters here. They grip the bar and the hole goes right the way from the front to the rear of the casting and that means that the bar can be pushed to the rear out of the way uh, leaving space for the head to, to fit on. That distance between the rear and the front is 14 inches and then we need to add on the length in front of the machine that the bar needs to come forward. So I've laid the support bracket on its side and I've moved the table out as far as it can go. And that leaves me um, about ten and a half inches from the front of the machine to the inside of the bracket. And I think that should be sufficient for spacing uh, cutters to cover the full width of the table. So on that basis the front of the bracket is now twelve and a half inches from the front of the machine. So the total length of our bar then is uh, 12 and a half inches plus 14 which is 26 and a half inches. So we need to cut that bar to 26 and a half inches long. So in preparation for machining the bar to the correct diameter I needed to make an end cap which could be held in a forge or chuck to enable me to run along the whole length of the bar. This is just being machined from a piece of free cutting mild steel bar, 2 and 3 8 inches in diameter. So now over to my larger pillar drill, which has a more accurate quill. And uh, using my homemade rotary table, I'm indexing in three 6mm clearance holes and counter boring for socket head cap screws.
Now my homemade counterbore has some limitations and one of them is that it can't remove a lot of material quickly. So I pre-drill the holes, opening, opening them up to just under the final size to almost the right depth and then finish off with a counterbore. Counterbores seem very expensive to me for what they are if you purchase them. So I made mine and this um, works very well as long as you go carefully. It's made from silver steel or drill rod and if you'd like to see how this one was made then have a look at this video. And this is the cap that uh, I made with the four countersunk uh, screw holes and of course this will go in the four jaw chuck and that will enable me full access to the shaft here for machining so I can go right up to the to the end of the shaft. Now um, I think three socket head cap screws would have been sufficient, uh, six millimeter but I put the, th the fourth one in because I can use that to hold this down while I machine the others. There's not much to hold on to to clamp this and uh, so what I thought I'd do is pick up the existing center hole here, uh, drill that out and um, tap that uh, six millimeter and then we can locate this on here and I can make sure this is concentric, tighten down that center screw there and then use these three um, as a guide for drilling the other holes. So I've got the bar supported off off the uh, this lower machined pad which is very useful on this drill um, using a three jaw chuck uh, so that's uh, square and uh, we'll take the end load and I've just put this g-cramp on here to uh, tie it into the table just to provide a bit of extra support here so with a bit of fiddling around I can pick up the the center drilled hole here which I assume is going to be on center and uh, we'll drill that out tap it six millimeter and then we can um, use that to hold the cap down when I was originally looking for material for this bar I was searching for steel stock which was quite expensive and I had to purchase it oversized to machine it down to the correct size so I looked around for second-hand materials and purchased this which was advertised as steel in fact it's the pillar from an old pillar drill as soon as I started to machine it I realized it was actually cast iron but then I began to wonder perhaps the original bar was cast iron anyway I think it's fine I don't think it really matters whether it's steel or cast iron for this application So using a conical pin held in the chuck, I carefully located each hole under the center line of the drill and then uh, clamped it up, making sure that the chuck on the base was sitting squarely. You may have noticed when I was drilling that this was rotating. I tightened the central bore top as much as I could, but still this is rotating. So I'm just going to try and rig up this uh, this here to stop it from rotating by clamping this against the the pillar. Hopefully that will limit this movement. Don't know if this is going to work, but it's worth a try. Let's try again. Turns out it worked perfectly. It did not move at all. So I left these with bits and pieces ready for the same operation on the other end of the bar to be done later. Despite this setup looking rather unwieldy, once I got into the swing of things it was actually quite easy to accurately locate each of the holes.
So now I'm uh, getting set up for parting the bar off to the correct length. I've had another think about this and I finally settled on a length of 27 inches. Now uh, to do that I've got to use a fix steady. This is actually a homemade fix steady and if you want to see the videos on that then uh, there's a link here which will appear and uh, you can have a look at that if you're, if you're interested. So the way I'm setting this up is first of all I'm going to get it concentric in the four jaw chuck and then we're going to um, clock up the front face and the top until it's parallel with the axis of the bed by adjusting the jacking screws on the on the fixed steady. Okay, so that's clocked in. It's running concentrically at that end. Now what we need to do is adjust the vertical height. So I'm going to bring this onto the center and then we'll traverse along the length and see how that changes. Okay, that's slightly higher, the tailstock end, so we need to lower these jacks slightly. Okay, that looks about right now on the on the front to get the to get the lateral alignment correct. Okay, so it needs to be brought slightly closer to the front. So what I found is that uh, for lateral movements, when I'm close to the final size, I can just leave the vertical one alone and just adjust the two lower ones. That seems quite quite successful. After I started to make this fixed steady, I did wonder if it would have been better to design it with four four um, points of contact, and that would have given me uh, better control on on uh, locating uh, on achieving uh, concentricity. But actually, I found it not to be a problem, and uh, I found uh, with the jacking screws and just three three fingers it seems to work quite well. A bit of surface roughness there but on the end two ends it's quite clean. Yeah that's that's bang on. So we'll double check the vertical alignment now. Yep, that looks fine. Well, I'm going to put some oil on this um, and then we can hopefully start to part this off. At this point I needed to extend the parting blade to get enough reach to get to the center. Unfortunately at that point the cut slightly went off course and you'll see later that uh, I had to correct that problem. As I got closer to separating the two parts I put this wooden block under the bar to support it because I was afraid that if the bar dropped it would damage my fixed steady because it's really quite heavy certainly for the size of the machine and the fixed steady.
Okay, that wasn't as uh, difficult as I thought it was going to be. So uh, that's good. Remains to see how square that cut is. Now in that parting operation I think I made a bit of a mistake. Uh, you can see that the piece that was left over is slightly concave and so the other piece is convex. Um, and I can't really leave it like that because uh, the, the cap has to fit on the other end as well. It needs to sit nicely. So um, I think what I should have done really is to is to part it out uh, as a roughing cut and then uh, index in slightly and then take a facing cut and I think that way I would have got it flat. So what I've done is set it up on the mill and um, hopefully I can just square up the end. So I've got the I've got the bar now in my larger vise and I've got a jack under the end here and I'm just uh, getting this uh, parallel with the table just jacking it up until my DTI doesn't change along the length. I also need to do the same for squareness on the end here. Once I've done that I'll just uh, dress this up with an end mill and just take off that high spot. Well that's all we have time for this video. At least I've been able to uh, cut this to length and square off the end. Uh, the next operation will be to drill and tap the four six millimeter holes so that this cap can go on this end as well. Um, and the reason for that is that um, I can hold both ends in the four jaw chuck and machine right up to the edge uh, holding the other end in the, in the fixed steady as you saw earlier. The turning this to size will have to be for next video. I think that's going to be quite a major operation, certainly for my little lathe. So we'll um, reserve that till next video. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I do hope there's been something here of interest to you.